Hello, my name is Scott with Rocky Mountain Drones. I've just spent a couple of weeks traveling with Southern Alberta Flam and Agriculture team members. This video is quite long and it's meant to be because we wanted to create a video where people who are considering looking at these spray drones as an option for their operations, a chance to watch the drones flying in several different environment types because most of the videos produced are great because they just show features of the drone primarily, but this video is gonna let you sit and watch the drones fly. We managed our time by organizing demonstrations in the morning and also in the afternoon and inevitably more than one group would always show up to the demonstrations just because of the very high level of interest in the most modern drone technology. So we would show the farmers about flying a mission with a Mavic 3 multispectral which would gather both RGB and multispectral data. So the RGB data would be used to create an orthomosaic map so they can have a look and a good overview of the property to get a good idea of how the crops are looking and performing as well as terrain models for the purpose of water management in the case of wanting to make use of the data for trenching etc. And then finally using the multispectral data which has come such a long way and is so accurate now. now with the multispectral data the farmer is able to see very clearly and accurately the plant health literally pixel by pixel throughout their entire fields. And so with the multispectral data, there's a clear view and, and picture of the plant health in all of the fields. So this will help the farmer make good decisions about how to treat their crops and, and manage their spraying activities. One thing that was common throughout all of the demonstrations is that everybody always commented about how they had no idea that the drones, the spray drones that is in particular, were so productive and they were very surprised at how much work could be done. Yes, and there it is. Flown with the drone at three meters, about 20 kilometers an hour, and extra course spray rate. Put inside of the was traveling at 20 kilometers an hour, about three meters in the air, extra coarse droplets. These strips were uh, with the drones at a very coarse, so 500 microns. This was at about 250. This uh, T-50 here has been in service only for four days now. We've been doing demonstrations at the rate of two demonstrations a day for this week, uh, which is June 7th, the week of June 7th. And this drone was flown for about uh, 80 yards, just as a, a manual flight test. So this is the first test uh, flight, or excuse me, the first uh, mission for, for that drone. Okay. There you go. Go on out with it. Four oh one.
And here are our future farmers taking real interest in the drone technology. This operation was a very interesting use case scenario. The farm, besides having a tremendous amount of acreages to farm, also had large gardens and they wanted to see how the drones might be able to be used for the type of fertilizing or granular spreading in the gardens. So we took the drones in there and they did a great job. A quick so example of calibration for the granular tank for the type of materials the farm would like to spread. It is starting the calibration. This is the drone operating with the granular tank. You're going to watch it spread about 50 kilograms of materials, as I recall. It wouldn't hurt to mention, I suppose, that the aerial shots that you see of the drones in this video were taken by a fellow from Lethbridge operating a DJI Mini 3 Pro. Every day, we would get reports through Smart Farm app showing us all the work that the drones had done. Like the one you're looking at now shows exactly what happened in the demonstration that you're looking at. The wind conditions for the rest of the demonstration video you're going to see were just fantastic. It was a constant uh, wind of around 15 kilometers per hour, or nine miles per hour, and gusting up to 25 kilometers per hour, or around 15 miles per hour. Very nice. If anyone knows the Lethbridge area in Alberta, Canada, they'll know that it's known for wind, but we were lucky enough for a couple of days here to have really favorable conditions. And so we were able to set the drone parameters flying at 10 feet above canopy. We flew at 23 feet per second, which is 16 miles per hour. And sometimes that seemed like it might be a little bit fast, 
but for application rates we were flying pretty much always at two gallon per minute and then once in a while we would step it up to about three or 3.2 gallons per acre just so that the audience could get a little bit better look at the uh, mist, the spray coming out. And then we also set the droplet size to be just at fine, so somewhere around um, 250 microns. One thing we found really quite interesting in this particular sequence of the videos is how you're able to see the swaths left behind by the drones. This sequence also really demonstrated well how the prop wash vortex absolutely forces the droplets down towards the crops and opens them right up and this is exactly why earlier on we were showing examples of spray strips getting right down into inside of the peas that were very tall and the wind in that day was in excess of 45 kilometers an hour and we can also see in this sequence how the vortex effect really does control the width of the swath In these last few segments that you've been watching, we were using two drones in all of the fields and the way we did it was by using a function called route segmentation. So we would create a route for the entire field on one of the drone controllers and then we would save and upload that um, mission to the cloud so that the second controller could download to use the same mission. And then we used the route segmentation function to assign a section of the field to each of the drones. So for each of the groups of people that we spent time with, 
We taught them and showed them the entire workflow from using a Mavic 3 multi-spectral drone to take full advantage of all of the benefits from flying that drone to processing the data and having a look at the data to make good decisions for a farm and how to treat their crops and, and really engage in precision farming. And then of course the different considerations that a person may make when they're planning the flight missions with one or more drones. In many cases, it's appropriate to consider large teams of drones. Some of the farmers we worked with had in excess of 15 to 18,000 acres of land. And performing the demonstrations as we've been doing ever since working with the spray drones, it, it becomes very obvious how every operation from a smaller operation to the largest of operations has different needs and we always have a way to fit the need. Creating and adding another tool for a toolbox for each and every farmer. And we would be more than happy to come out and see you anywhere in Western Canada through our large dealership network. We've created a network of dealers, all of which who have a tremendous amount of experience in the agriculture industry, as well as finding people who've had a long-term understanding of drones. And so by working with one of the dealerships of the Rocky Mountain Drone Network of Dealers, you'll be working with professionals who not only understand agriculture, but also truly understand drones. Rocky Mountain Drones, Flamin and DJI Agriculture would like to thank you very much for spending the time watching this video of all the demonstrations we were doing. We really hope that spending the time watching the drones fly in different environments was useful and helpful for you to make decisions on your use of the spray drone.